Good afternoon. Right, hoping I find you well on this Tuesday afternoon. My name is Prosper Tarubing, the founder and CEO of Live Long Digital. Uh, it's two o'clock and we're going to be having a lunch and learn. And my main focus is to help you market, scale and grow your business using the four step online prosperity blueprint system. OK, so essentially, if this is your first time tuning in, I hope you're going to have a well of a time. And also, don't forget to subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. And if you're on Facebook, then obviously this is the place to be. Share this video if you find it to be of value okay so um, as I was explaining if this is your actual first time uh, of meeting us every single day at 2 p.m. AEST if it's not a public holiday or if the weather permits we go on live and we talk about how we can help you market scale and grow your business I also focus on um, helping you uh, position yourself as the go-to guy within your area and uh, Joe Cross, how's it going, my man? Thank you so much for tuning in. And um, yeah, like I was saying, I also focus on positioning um, you as the go-to person while using the online pr uh, prosperity uh, blueprint. And I also help you actually by showing you how to genuinely help your prospects and you know help them see you as the person they can go to before you even pitch to them so if you want to see a few of our videos check out our youtube channel it's jam-packed with um you know all these trips tips and trips that are designed to help you market your own business now today we're talking about something that we come across a lot uh, in our business day-to-day -day lives how do you actually answer the question, what do you do? Now, Joe, you're probably watching uh, Theodore. How's it going? If somebody asks you, what do you do? What do you normally answer back? And what do you think they're actually asking you there? So this is what we're going to dive into so that you will be able to position yourself as the person that actually can help somebody who has a pain. The reason why they're asking you what you do is because they want to know how you are going to be helping them. All right. So half of the time, um, I don't know if you guys are um, that connected within your area. Um, you have... Um, you know, things like BNI, you have all those other networking sort of um, groups. I'm not talking about network marketing. I'm talking about real business networking where people with the real business go in and meet other people with real businesses to um, help each other market scale and grow. Alex, thank you so much for tuning in. And um, I usually joke about this, but sometimes just replying, you know what? I'm not 100% sure. It actually breaks the ice and you get a more productive conversation started instead of you trying to blah, 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 I'm a this, 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 and that, that, that. Okay? So, you know, people normally when they ask you, what do you do? They want to know what's in it for me to have this conversation further than the first three seconds that we just had. OK, so I've been, like I was saying, a member of a networking organization. Some of you guys know the BNI. And I've also been an enthusiast of, you know, this whole online social networking that we're starting to do, whereby every single day I reach out and um, I friend request about 10 people so that I expand my network. OK, so you might be on my friend list right now. You're probably one of the 10 that I actually, um, you know, you know, reached out and could connected with. Thank you so much for accepting my friend request, by the way. I'm not weird. Okay. And um, yeah, and I often hear the same question when I friend request these people in my inbox, people asking me, so what is it that you do? Half the time we already think that, you know, your, your profile is saying it, but people are not asking to know that you're a consultant, you're a coach, or you're a lawyer, you're a doctor, or you're an astronaut. Okay, and if you're actually listening to this, I'm sure you've had people asking you as well. What do you do, Sam? Alex, what do you do? Jamie, what do you do? Okay, All right. So it's such a loaded question, isn't it? Okay, and if you know, I've answered it so many times. First of all, I'm African. Jamie, how's it going? First of all, I'm African. All right. So I start thinking to myself, are they actually asking me 
What am I doing in Australia? Are they asking me, what am I doing here? You know what I mean? So you never know where you are taken aback with that question, all right? And then you start questioning your own existence as in, don't they know what I do? Do you know what I mean? I thought it was written all over the place, all right? So I've answered this question a lot of time, but I still feel, you know, a little flutter in my stomach every time somebody asks me, so Prosper, what's your job or what do you do for a living? Well, I'm a door-to-door -door salesman and I sell doors, but <laughs> you can't tell people that, oh, I'm a dolphin trainer or something like that. You see, because the, the question they're really asking you, Jamie or Alex or Peter or Sally, is who are you and what should I care? That's exactly what they're asking you right there. Who are you, Jamie, and why should I care? You know, and, and, you know, we already have this uh, sort of maybe elevator pitch that we have created. And sometimes we know it when we're saying it to ourselves. But if you're just frightened a little bit or if you're actually in an elevator and the elevator suddenly stops and somebody opens the door, I swear you will forget what your elevator pitch is. OK, see, I could probably reply that I'm a digital marketing expert or I'm a content creator or I'm a content marketer or. I could just tell you I'm an astronaut. Or oh, my favorite go-to one is I'm a door-to-door -door salesman and I sell doors. But in fact, that answer, you know, that answer that you hear 99% of the time from somebody, it's just a response which they think you want to hear. Now, whether the person is about 18 or 65 or no matter how experienced they are, you know, Trish, can you write in the comments below what do you do? Trish, can you write in the comments, what do you do? And you'll be surprised um, as to what we're talking about today. And uh, thanks for tuning in, by the way. So, you know, sometimes people all, almost say the same thing. When asked whether they're 18 or 65, they say, I am a doctor or I am an intern at such, such a bank or I am retired or I am a pensioner or I am this, I am that, I am, you know, you know. But when you give answers like that you're automatically putting yourself in a really really tiny box okay most people's reaction is to you know default to either just being collect, uh, you know po polite and saying eh, okay that's cool you're a graphic designer wow what's it like all right and then the reaction usually has to do with how much money do they think you're making and you're already put in this confined box all right and you know what humans are creatures of habit they want to see everything in ways that they can define it. They want to see everything, um, you know, in a way that they are exposed to it. They don't want to change the way they see things or they don't want to change the way they view things. All right. So this is the reason why people like to sort of compartmentalize and label everything that they can. You know why? Because this is something that they're used to and they're creatures of habit. All right. So it is actually human nature. We, we cannot do anything about that. So normally when somebody asks you, what do you do? Nine times out of 10, they genuinely do not care about your answer. Whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, you know, an astronaut, or you're a teacher, a murderer, whatever you do, or you're an aspiring actor or a celebrity, it does not matter at all to them. Okay. What they really want to know, guys, is how can you help me? What's in it for me to be in this conversation right now? You see, keeping this in mind, you might consider, you know, something that they did at Harvard Business School. Um, I should, I should, I should, I should know what it's called. It's called Jobs to be Done Theory. All right. So, you know, it's, it's, it is a business theory that the guys, the intelligent guys at, um, you know, Harvard's bus Harvard Business School came up with that it has broad implica implications or, imp you know, you know, it, it has got a broad spectrum for everything from pretty much product development to marketing. And normally when somebody asks you, so what do you do? You want to relate yourself to a product that you produce? or a marketing lyric or a marketing saying that you're used to, all right? Which is 
something that means nothing to our prospects. And that's the reason why nobody can actually, um, you know, refer you to other people because literally they don't know what you can do for them. So in other words, that translates to, I don't know what they can do for you. So why should I tell you that Trish exists? Does that, does that make sense so far? So, you know, the, all those jobs to be done, um, you know, that we tell people that we do, customers don't hire a product because they don't know if it works. Customers don't hire a service because, you know, no matter how many bells and whistles or doodads you're going to put across, it's just a job to be done or it's just a product to be shelved. They don't buy that. All right, so um, I think it was Theodore's uh, comment. <laughs> Who is that? I think it was Theodore Levitt. I think I'm not quite sure. I might I might just check that. It says people don't buy a drill or a drill bit. They want to buy a hole. All right, so when somebody wants to make something, they are not looking to buy the tool or the system that you know helps you make whatever the outcome you want right so you want to make sure that when you're telling people who you are or what it is that you do you are selling the outcome you're selling the end result you know i think you would remember what was that um, when the ipod came out for example when steve job brought it out you know everyone and their mom bought one not because it was the coolest thing to ever have but because I've got a question for you. Oh. You have to get Give me one second. Oh, where is it? In the next 30 days or less, how would you do it? Oh. <laughs> how cool is it? One of my videos just decided to play. <laughs> Great. All right. Sorry about that. So I was talking about the iPad when when uh, the iPod when the iPod actually um came in. All right, everyone went and bought it, and I believe maybe yourself, David Bolton, you went and bought one. Trish, you went and picked up one as well. And it was the coolest thing to have at that time. It wasn't because, you know, people did not have a way of listening to music. But it was Apple's words, or it was Steve Jobs' words, that says you could have 1,000 songs in your pocket. That changed the whole scenario of how people experienced music because all you had was a CD, right? And maybe on a CD maximum, you'd have 10 songs. But just the thought of having 1,000 songs in your own pocket that you can listen to any single time you feel like, all right? So it's just the, the iPod came in and it actually really phased out the Walkman and any other device that was there around that time, you know what? Because it was doing a much more specific job. It was playing a large curated selection of music on the go. If they just came in and said, listen, this is another piece you need to put in your pocket so you can listen to music, it wouldn't have sold. But the outcome of it, you know, collecting a thousand songs that you can never listen up until the end. I mean, at that time, it was a lot. But these days, people are listening to three songs at a time. I know myself, I do that sometimes. You know? So unfortunately, what we're used to replying and saying, this is what I do, is just the product. You are going out telling people, I'm an iPod. You should be going out telling people, no, I'm an instrument that you can use to collect a thousand songs in your pocket at any given time. Alright, so what we're doing is what we're taught and what we expose ourselves does not at all explain consumer behavior. You know, for example, how do people actually choose, um, let me see, you know, sweets or candy bars or gum? How do they do that? What about soft drinks? What on earth does anyone go out of their way not to drink a Pepsi just because they are a fan of Coca-Cola? You see, the truth is, there are many products out there and mostly, a lot of them, they're similar and they're exactly the same, but people choose only with what they're used to and there's emotional reasons that are involved. 
Alright, so the emotional reason that comes into play just because all oh, you grew up knowing was Pepsi is, is the reason why you cannot fuck them or you cannot go out and buy a Coca-Cola. And the same is, the, the reverse is true. Alright, so sometimes you might go about and say, okay, I'm the cheapest person in town or I've got the lowest, you know, priced products. Consumers, they don't choose products for, you know what I mean, for, 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 for reasons that you think they do. They choose them for emotional reasons, all right? Now, the emotional reason that is attached to an iPod is the 1,000 songs that you can have at any given time. It's not the fact that it's sleek, it's nice, or it's top of the range. No, it's the fact of the outcome, which is the 1,000 songs that you get. All right. So, you know, sometimes, you know, like any specific type of lifestyle branding, you know, or if your goal is to save money or anything else, you go for what is familiar, what's in it for you. You don't go for the bells and whistle or anything else. All right. So, you know, if your product is in the higher price tier or whatever it is, customers actually choose products for functional reasons. All right. It's like getting an important job done better than any other way that they would probably um, have it done by anybody else. So anytime somebody asks you, so, hey, Prosper, what is it that you do? You want to make sure you are answering them with the outcome that they expect. All right. So it might sound like it's a very simple question. What do you do? It is very, very relevant because that's your entry point to getting somebody to actually open up. So every time somebody starts talking to you, you're buying at least three seconds of the conversation. Have you ever noticed that? When they ask you, what do you do? You only have three seconds to respond. And those three seconds buy you the next 30. In that next 30, that's when you have the time to at least explain what else you can do or listen to them. So it's actually quite relevant to have it down packed when somebody asks you, what do you do? In the real world, guys, people buy products because of functional and emotional reasons. Okay, so you want to make sure, you know, you, 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 you are actually touching all those points. Like I was talking about that, the iPod a bit earlier on. It created a product that was 100% on the functional side and also 100% on the emotional side. You know? Because they, they created the connection that, was lo that the customers were longing for. People had always been tired of you know, that one CD and carrying a whole bunch of CD. Now that what they wanted was something functional, all right, where they could put all their music into one piece and it wouldn't weigh as much. All right, so this is how Apple decided to help people. That was the outcome of how they answered, what would the iPod do for me? All right, so, you know, let's stop talking about maybe products and actually just go back to you as, you know, an individual who is a business person. All right, as I mentioned earlier, when somebody asks you, what do you do? He is actually asking you, how can you help me? And the questionnaire or the person who is actually asking that question wants to know, can you satisfy some sort of functional or emotional need that they might have? All right. So this is when, when you actually then utilize the blueprint, you would know exactly the people that you're reaching out to, what emotional pain or um, you know, functional need does your product serve? All right, so this is the first part that we're talking about, just the capture phase. All right, so sometimes when somebody asks you, what do you do? And you say, oh, I'm in sales or I'm in marketing. You're not really answering a question unless, you know, the person who's asking is just specifically looking to hire a salesperson, you know? So whenever, you know, I say I'm a digital marketer or I'm a writer or I'm, I'm a comedian or whatever, that's too what do you call it? It's not as specific as the, you know, end user can utilize or decode that information. You know, some people would automatically assume um, that, okay, so you're a writer, you probably, 
you know, just write your own stuff or who do you write for and things like that. Or they just associate writing with poverty. I don't know what goes on in their mind because like I said, humans are creatures of habit. And some will actually think that the work that you do is kind of neat, but they won't even care as long as you are actually saying, Hi, I'm Trish. I help you make your brand visible. Then you trick or you, you sort of trigger a few things in their head there. You know, so in a business, um, in a business setting, your goal normally is to frame the question and answer it differently so that you actually pique the interest of the listener and convince that person um, to, to keep listening. Every time you say something, you're buying three seconds into the conversation. All right. So there's usually, I think, maybe two or three ways. I don't quite know. It depends on what you're actually doing. But with the things that I've experimented, um, um, when people ask me, you know, I've experimented with a lot of answers to this question. And I've discovered that usually there's two answers that are far and away most engaging. You know, when somebody asks you, so what do you do? You see, when, when, when my listener isn't really paying attention and, you know, they just mentally ask that question, what do you do? Or it's the same to them as how's the weather? All right. So when you answer the what do you do question in any direct way, you are already losing the battle for attention. Does that make sense? Because... They already have things going on in their head or you have not really convinced them, first of all, with whatever you've been saying to them all this time up until it gets to that stage of saying, seriously, dude, <laughs> what do you waste your time doing? Just intrigue me. All right. And the best way to answer then is to really be modest. You know what I mean? And, and slightly mysterious. Sometimes I really go in and say I'm a door-to-door -door salesman and I sell doors, right? And then they start thinking, wait a minute, are you carrying the doors and you go slamming on people's doors and then say, hey, here's another door. You know what I mean? Automatically, they're already thinking about, wait a minute, what's actually going on here? So, for example, you know, you, you might be at an informal event or get together where people are just using the what do you do question as an icebreaker, as, a, as, an, as an icebreaker. You know, sometimes you can just say something like, you know what, Psst, I'm not 100 percent sure. And I tell you something, it tends to earn them a laugh. And sometimes they just laugh back and they're like, really, seriously, what do you do? And then. Pretty much after that, you've broken their pattern, all right? And now they're ready to listen to your elevator pitch, all right? So you want to start off with a joke and then get their attention, then go in with the exact thing. That way, you've opened up their, their mind, now they're listening to you. You see, you'll notice that when you also answer it that way, something interesting really, really, really happens. Uh, something interesting is happening here. You know, you, you, you get very confident because you're expecting that laugh and you actually carry yourself well because you you're waiting for them to respond and your listeners will actually actually become interested. You know why? Because your body changes and you, when you go in and you're like, I'm a door to door salesman and I sell doors, you know, and eventually, you know, he or she will come back to you into like a more endless conversation. Because they've never heard of it, they've never really, they're trying to work it out in their head how it works out. And automatically now they're paying attention. So it then takes you in the direction that you actually want with the listener, which is actually paying attention to you. You know, sometimes, you know, you could, um, you, you could just mention during this second conversation that I run a successful digital marketing agency and they'll actually listen to you then. Yeah, because you want to keep in mind that in the second scenario, you know, they are now in a way that they're like, wait a minute, did I hear this person correctly? And they're questioning themselves that they don't want to be embarrassed that they were not listening. Do you know what I mean? And also they don't want to offend you in the same uh, token of what is that what you do? You know what I mean? It is just human nature right there. So once you confuse them a little bit. Break their pattern and then go in and say, hey, I actually run 
a successful digital marketing agency and I help coaches and consultants to market, scale and grow their businesses so they have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Yeah? Because you know what? Nobody really cares that you're a digital marketer. But I also know that most people are interested in to know how they can feather their own business, how they can get leads and clients, but they don't care that that's what I do. What they worry about is how do I get fast clients? How do I get the leads? So figure it out in your own scheme of ways on how you are answering the question, what do you do? So at the end of the day, instead of me saying I'm a digital marketer, I might just say I help people and businesses say the right things and get more recognition and customers. But if I say that at first hand, nobody's going to understand me. And that usually then gets them interested longer for, you know, a conversation. And it sort of sets the stage up for me to build, you know, two of the most important aspects in relationship, which is trust and respect. And we all know that people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. Josh, cheers for tuning in, buddy. And Barbara, nice to see you around. All right, shoot, thanks for tuning in. And remember, guys, nobody wants to buy, you know, a quarter-inch drill or, you know, the latest toothbrush. What they want is shiny teeth and tooth without, you know, cavities or decay. So you want to give them what they want when they ask for it. All right. So, you know, when somebody does ask you, so what do you do? You know, you you know, it's a tired question. You know, they're not expecting, you know, an, an, an answer that you have already prepared. Just try out one of the first two that I mentioned. First of all, just break their pattern and joke about it. And then second, just make up something on the spot. You know, like, oh, I'm just here picking up the cups. You know what I mean? And they're like, oh, no, I don't believe that. And then, you know what I mean? It then puts them in the frame of mind to actually listen to you. And the idea is to actually answer differently than everybody else does. That also automatically makes you go way, you know, above the crop. All right. Because if you're just going to give, you know, an answer that's rehearsed, rehashed, they've probably heard it before. Do you know what I mean? Everybody else you know, is going to be giving that same listener that same answer. And you want to give that listener that's listening to you a compelling reason to talk to you about more. So in fact, let's actually take some time to practice this right now. Type in the comments below, you know, so that when people are coming through and watching this, they know what is it that you do. So type in, in the comments, what do you do again? Type in the comments, what do you do? All right. So whenever you're going to go next to like a BNI, um, you know, or any of those membership uh, or member sort of meetups, you know what I mean? Whenever somebody asks you a question, try not to just regurgitate what you have already sort of, um, you know, learnt or thought is your elevator pitch. Because like I said, guys, people, when they ask you, um, what do you do? They're actually asking you a question that is. Who are you and why should I care? All right. This is the stuff that we really look at seriously in the online prosperity blueprint where we help you craft a message that goes to the right kind of people, explain their right kind of pain. All right. And you will be the person that can solve this pain for them. All right. With the exact products that gives them a payoff that makes it easy for you to actually then relay who you are what you serve and why people should care all right and then instead of you going about you know having to explain who you are you can actually just put out content that is very engaging you know why because you already know your people you already know their pain you already know what payoff they need all right so when you have this content that's already engaging you're already educating them on what you are capable of what your service provides or what your product survives all right. And then you're positioning yourself and you're inspiring them, you know, with whatever it is that you're going to be helping them with and providing value in the process. So you can also 
type in Blueprint so that I can send you through. And I'll also throw in the PDF that explains how to use this Blueprint, okay? So type in Blueprint right now before I go. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you're on Facebook, as soon as this video ends, hit subscribe button so that you don't miss out on our uh, daily show. Every, every single day we come in and we um, help you market scale and grow your business. Hopefully this one has been a valuable one. Enjoy the rest of your day.